development blog. New ships, close testing 0.11.7. American cruiser Vallejo, European destroyer Velos, and British aircraft carrier Malta have been added to the game for testing. That's Wooster guns. Oh, one of the pro versions of the project which preceded the creation of Wooster class cruisers. The main armament is 1052mm dual purpose guns in 5 turrets. Vallejo is a light cruiser with improved ballistics and good firing range, as well as a spotting aircraft consumable with an accelerated reload, which allows her to fire effectively at long ranges. Did they just make Orbital Wooster a real ship? Did they just make Orbital Wooster a real ship? What? Hmm. Interesting. The ship's consumables are presented by the defensive AA and repair part in separate slots, as well as rapid takeoff spotter. That's a new type of spotter, then. Or is that just the lazo? That's just like lazo spotter, almost. Rapid takeoff spotter with fast reload and a fighter consumable in a single slot. Imagine using fighters in, in World Warships. At the same time, unlike other American high tier cruisers, it has no hydro or radar. No hydro or radar. Jeez. So it's fully a long range HE spammer or behind islands HE spammer? Zero utility though. Look, if a ship has zero utility, then it has to make up for it in other ways. Like Colbert. Colbert has zero utility, but it has absolutely bonkers damage output. That's the compensation. So this thing needs to have basically bonkers damage output in order to make up for all the weaknesses. But even then, it's going to be like hard competition against something like a Donskoy. Like Donskoy can see the range, HE spam. It can brawl with torpedoes, it can radar, like it's got shit tons of utility and damage. Hmm. You have one less turret than a Wooster. European destroyer Velos. Velos. Greek. European destroyer Velos. Looks pretty sleek. I like the look of it. Looks like a Fletcher basically. Four turret Fletcher? Looks like a Fortress Fletcher, yeah. One of the many Fletcher class destroyers that was transferred to the Greek Navy in 1950. What the? The destroyer has rapid firing main battery guns and one torpedo launcher with fast reload. The ship also features good concealment and a smoke generator with a long smoke screen dispersion time. In addition to smoke generator, the ship's equipment is represented by the engine boost and defensive AA in separate slots. How is this not just a kid without a heel? This seems like a very lazy ship. Like a super lazy pasta. Super lazy pasta. Is it, it looks like a tier 9 kid without a heel. I mean, sure, the snets might be different, but like... In terms of effort put into this, this is the most copy pasta of copy pasta. Jesus. British aircraft carrier Malta. Wow, this sure looks World War II. Holy shit. Classic World War II design here. Oh, wow. A project of a large aircraft carrier with an armor deck, of course, which was developed during the war, taking into account the experience of military operations Pacific. The aircraft carrier has a large number of aircraft in a squadron and attack flight compared to the recent. Of course it does. Another feature of the ship is her dive bombers attacking in a horizontal flight and carrying AP bombs. Attacking in a horizontal flight. So you, 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 you can't even... So they drop you sideways. With AP bombs? I don't understand. Horizontal flight. Isn't that how all planes fly? Do they mean horizontal drop pattern? Do they mean horizontal like drop pattern? More like carpet bombs. Level bombing. Oh. Ah, they don't dive and drop them, they just... Ah, now I understand what you mean. Now, yeah, now I understand. They don't dive and drop, they go in a straight... They just fly, carpet bomb, with AP bombs. 
Jesus. That sounds like a lot of fun to be on the receiving end. AP bombs, exactly what the game needed. Like, being, being struck by CVs is extra fun when you can't even heal the damage that they deal. That's my favorite part. I, I love that. I can only imagine how much fun playing something like a Moskva is when this drops across your gigantic ship. Also an experiment, as an experiment to familiarize new players with the game, special ships identical to the characteristics of La Galicinera and Richelieu have been added. They will be given to new players. These ships can only be used in co-op at training battles. One. Have they just given up on people leveling and just playing the game, like, normally? Have they just given up on that? Now they just want you into tier 8 instantly? Is that what they're doing? Also, what a strange choice of ships. Galicinier, I can maybe somewhat understand, but Richelieu? What other tech tree ship plays like Richelieu? It's a nose in battleship. No, like it's a nose in front guns battle. Sean Bart, yeah, that's the only one. I guess it's really potato proof, so they could just run nose in and shoot things. So newbies won't get broadsided, right? But I feel like they're not gonna learn anything regarding angling playing a Richelieu. Because you you accidentally angle with Richelieu without them trying. North Carolina would have been a good yeah North Carolina would have been a good training battleship. That ship teaches you to aim and position and punishes broadsides. North Carolina is probably still one of the best balanced battleships in the game. They won't learn much on co-op anyway. That's that's fair. Okay, Vallejo, 44,000 health, 25 mil plating. That's Wooster range, 16.7, 5x2, maximum HE shell 220. Reload time, 5 seconds. Wait, what's Wooster reload? 4, but this is with module. Is it the same? Wooster is 4.6, yeah, with 4.6, yeah, it couldn't be 5. 4.62k2 alpha. So, one gun less, or one turret less than than booster, and also worse reload. Roughly 10% worse reload, and. Well. Shit. That's a fair bit. From 12, 12 to 10? Huh. That's a bit. That's... that's not a lot of damage. Very lazy ships? Yeah, I agree, these are super lazy ships. Uh, what's AA like? 13376, 6 flak. Wooster has 9, I think. No, it also... oh well, it only had 6 as well. Wait, who was it who had more flak then? Ah, of course. <laughs> Nevsky has... Nevsky has 8. But uh, Wooster has six, of course. Can't have the light American AA cruiser have more AA than the light Soviet cruiser. That makes sense. Um, okay. Pen is different? No, pen is the same. 30 millimeter pen is on the Americans as well. This is very standard. Maximum speed 32.5, circle 740, rudder shift 10.7, surface detect 11.5. I don't understand the point of this ship. I don't understand the point of this ship. It's a tier 9 Wooster. Actually, it's a tier 9 Lidl Wooster with no fucking utility. W what's the point? What's the point? Asset reuse? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It just looks like the laziest asset reuse ever. Oh, let's give it this unique twist. 
we remove everything that's good about the Wooster, and then we add range. Loot box filler, yeah. Whales will throw anything they buy anything they throw at them, kinda. I don't understand the point. I can't see any reason of playing this thing. Like if I want to play an a tier nine cruiser HE spammer, Donskoy, then I can also be useful and I'm quite tanky. Did you notice that both Vallejo and Velos have the modern grey camo, which is extremely lazy? Yeah, I mean these are super lazy. Yeah, and Donskoy special ballistics like all of them. Look, matte grey paint, matte grey paint, matte grey paint. <laughs> this is. These are some of the laziest premiums I've ever seen. It, yeah, I mean, if you want to play tier 10, then there's a lot more competition than against Vallejo. I mean, Ibuki is probably better at HE spamming from range than this thing is. I don't get it. I don't understand the point of this thing. I don't want to understand the point of this, this thing. I actually like the grey paint? I mean, sure, but I mean, these are mega, mega lazy copy pasta ships. Hmm. It's American? Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to compete, I guess, with Seattle? Yeah, Seattle. Like, but Seattle has radar and hydro, which already makes it much more useful. I guess it'll have better firing angles than Seattle, but but yeah, I don't know. Just weird. Seattle has terrible turret angles. Yeah, I know. That's exactly my point. Smaller, faster booster turrets will make firing angles better for sure. European Destroyer Velos, tier 9, 17.1k health, that's pretty fine, you end up at 20.6 with HP perk, or no, sorry, you don't get that much, you end up at 20.1 at tier 9, I think, right? Something like that. Main battery, 4x1, 12.1k base range, that's actually pretty good. For DD, that's pretty good base range. Maximum HE shell. Reload time 2.2. .2 on four guns. That's a fair bit of damage, isn't it? What is that? That's almost... What's the alpha? 1.8. What the fuck kind of damage is that? That's like, what, almost 200k? 196. Yeah, they're almost 200k. 196 is really good DPM. One X5 torpedoes, five through three. <laughs> yeah, man, man, I, I couldn't argue with that man after that point. He already made his case and I, I, I found myself actually agreeing with the guy I was arguing with, so. I mean, I guess that's a loss for me. I guess he won the argument. I mean, it was such a convincing, convincing point to make. So I just, I just kind of surrendered. He beat me. He beat me. I, I am, I accept defeat. Maximum damage: 19k per torp. That's spicy. 10.5k range. 66 knots. 60 second reload. Huh. I see, that, like, there, there's some really nice potential here where you you just you launch the torps every one minute and then you just run around gunboating 24-7. Occasionally you'll hit a torp, you'll cause a flood, um, and you'll just be burning, get, getting fires and burning them with, with this kind of damage output. And it's American, the problem is, of course, American smokes. American smokes is an issue because generally when you're playing a gunboat, or, or a smoking gunboat. You want something like daring smokes. Daring smokes are actually god tier because you can smoke farm, quickly reposition, smoke farm, quickly reposition, smoke farm. Like the cooldowns and the durations are short and they're, they're very optimal because of this. 
but uh, American smokes have the downside of once you smoke up, you're basically stuck there for three minutes. If you leave the smoke, well, then you're without a smoke for ages. Uh, if you sit in the smoke, you better hope everyone is pushing in and staying around and there's no hydro smokes, torps, whatever. Uh, oh, sorry, hydro radars, torps. So the, the, the American smoke kind of sabotages this thing a bit, but it could be worse. It could be IGN or German smokes, which have a really long cooldown and then last a very short time. So AA, only three flak. That's off. 38 speed, that's fine, 620, handles well, surface detect 69, 69, isn't 69, wait, 69, 69, that sounds real, that sounds way too good, what, 5, 6, does this thing really have 5, 6 conceal, yeah, you don't add the camo anymore, that's why I didn't add it, Five six. That's kind of cracked, cause this thing, ha if it has one ninety six DPM, it's beating Kitakaza in DPM, and with a five six conceal, Jesus. That's just fucking brutal against the IGN. I, I don't like the way they're continually power creeping like IGN or torpedo boat games game style, like. Uh, torpedo boats have always been balanced around the fact that, yes, they don't have a ton of firepower. In fact, they have pretty shitty firepower or questionable firepower, uh, and they're mostly torpedo focused. And in return, their concealment is better. But wargaming, with all these changes, making gunboats stealthier and stealthier, uh, adding radar destroyers, like they're, they're continually fucking over these torpedo boats because suddenly you don't really have a concealment advantage anymore. Your torps are a value against other destroyers and you just get yourself outgunned hard so yeah this is pretty fucked like kita dpm with shima conceal right how is it stronger than kita what stronger than kita i didn't say that it has too little health to be stronger than kita I'm talking about the IGN torpedo boats. That's not Kitakaza. I mean, Kitakaza will probably. I mean, it's gonna be a. F depends. It's pretty small though. It's a Fletcher. Kitakaza is a big ship. This thing is small. This thing can probably fight Kitakaza really well. This thing can probably fight Kitakaza really well. You're gonna outspot the Kita with. 500 meter buffer yes you're three you have 350 less health but or sorry 3500 less health but you get the jump on him you can probably drop the torps before you even engage him and you're a small agile ship i mean this thing is not going to be fun for kitakaza to fight at all it's going to suck Fuck, if it's an angled angled ship as well and you and he starts kiting away when you push him with the Kita, he can just outspot you 24-7. Yeah, no, this thing seems very strong. Very strong. Mostly because the concealment is really cracked. Concealment and DPM, I mean, and really fast torpedo reload. Hmm. Interesting. Smoke engine defensive AI. This is something kid com kid players wish for, being able to run engine boost and defensive AA. Still, no heal, no heal. But I mean, with heal, this thing would just be giga broken, so... It's, it seems really strong, though. Really strong. British air aircraft carrier Malta. Satan. That, that's, a, that's the number of the carrier right there. The number of the CV. Yep. 666. Hmm. Secondary ornament 5. AA. Eh, AA isn't that impressive actually. Usually carriers have completely cracked AA. 33.6. Hell of fast. Surface detect 15.2. Interesting. Damage control fighter. Hit points. Size of attacking flight 4. Aircraft per squadron 12. 
Size of attack and light 4. Rockets in payload 10. So what, 40 rockets? 40 rockets. <laughs> Am I missing something? 40 rockets per strike, and you can strike three times. I mean, these these are gonna shit on destroyers if they're anything like this. Huh. Looks very audacious, copy pasta, yeah? Torpedo bombers. Four, four aircraft per squadron. Restoration time 64 seconds. Man, you're getting a plane a fucking minute. You're getting a plane a minute in each. Oh, fucking hell, that's a lot of planes. Jesus. Um, torpedoes in payload one. So you're dropping four torps, 6k damage. Eh. Very short arming distance. We'll see what kind of spread they have. I mean, the damage isn't that. Of course, it's gonna fucking suck being on the receiving end, but the damage doesn't seem that impressive on this. Die bombers. Five attacking per squadron, 15 total. Four bombs, AP bombs, holy shit. So wait, you're dropping 20 AP bombs per drop. And you can drop 60 in total. 60 total, 60 AP bombs. Dropping 20 at a time. Fucking hell. Aircraft restoration also 51 seconds, which is hilariously fast. Jesus. 86k alpha, yeah. Man, being on the receiving end of this is gonna suck absolute dicks. It's unhealable damage as well, because it's citadel damage when it hits. Dude, imagine something like Moskva. You can hit, you can hit like 30-40k fucking AP damage when he drops you. Okay, I doubt that it's gonna be that narrow, but... Let's say 20k. 20k AP bomb damage. Per per drop. Per set. Man, that seems pretty awful. But then again, have we had a carrier that isn't awful to fight against? That seems to be their gimmick. Like, hey, this ship is gonna make your game experience suck. Interesting. Well, these were exceptionally boring ships, honestly. Um, like, uh, the, the uh, Velos seems fun to play, but like in terms of design, these are just pastas, copy pastas. Very copy pastas, and this is like audacious with AP bombers by the looks of it.